Recently, I've been getting a number of emails asking me what I think about the notion of a flat Earth. Now, this is a question that's been around for millennia, of course, but in recent decades, it's gained a much wider attention in the public. There are whole societies dedicated to the promotion of the idea of a flat Earth. And every now and then, you see on social media planned expeditions to go to Antarctica or to go into space in order to gather conclusive evidence that the Earth must be flat. Okay, so in this video, what I want to do is I want to explain and demonstrate visually why the idea of a spherical Earth is true and has been believed for a very long time. And when I say a long time, I don't mean since the advent of space travel. And I don't mean since Magellan made his famous voyage around the world. And I don't mean that since Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. I'm talking about for over 2,000 years. Because that's how long this idea that the Earth is a sphere has been around. It's a very, very old idea that came about not because of photos of Earth from space, but because of a simple, straightforward observation made right here on the surface of the Earth. And I'll show you those really basic observations today that proved to ancient people that the Earth is, in fact, round long, long before human beings set foot into space. First, let's start with a really basic observation. Standing in one place on Earth, on a clear night, we can watch as the stars in the sky appear to move around in an arc over our heads. This is what the sky looks like, sped up, say, if you're living in Greece, in Europe. Now, as maritime travel began to expand, as sea vessels began to travel throughout the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea, and eventually further south through the Indian Ocean, the Greek sailors would return home, and they would report that the sky above doesn't look like the sky back home in Greece. Let's look at the sky again and turn in a direction we call north. Notice the stars in the northern sky aren't turning in an arc, but spinning in a circle. And in the center of that circle is a pole around which all the stars are turning. Now, let's say we're a, a maritime trader who's gone through the Red Sea and into the Indian Ocean and has started to sail down to the area we now call the west coast of Somalia. We've come to what is often called by many people the equator. Now, what does the sky look like? If we look to the northern sky again, that pole around which all the stars were turning is now right on the horizon. All the stars are still, of course, turning in an arc over my head, some of the stars in the north, though, that were always up, spinning around in a circle in the sky, are now actually rising and setting with the rest of these stars. Okay, so let's say we kept going down the west coast of Africa, getting all the way down to the Cape of Good Hope. What do I see now? Now, if I look to the south, I can clearly see there's another pole of rotation in the sky. The stars are still rotating in an arc over my head, but the northern pole is now well out of sight, well below the horizon. I've sailed in this southern direction. Now I see new stars that I never saw back in Greece. And old stars that I used to always see all year long are now well below the horizon, and I never see them again. As a sailor, I've just made some crucial observations about the sky above me. The first observation that I made is that not all stars are visible to me at night from every location on Earth. Let's look at this very simplified model here. It's kind of a crude model, but it'll work for our purposes. This is our flat Earth. Here's Bob. He lives over here near the edge of this flat Earth. And here's Martha. She lives over here near the other edge. Here are some stars above them. Notice, from any vantage point, whether you're Bob or Martha, 
you should be able to see the same stars at the same time. But we know from sailing expeditions, we can't. Well, a spherical Earth explains why. Here's another model, our, our spherical model. You have Bob and Martha again. Bob lives up here in Northern Europe and Martha lives in South Africa. Here are the stars again. There comes a point from Bob's point of view when the horizon begins to hide certain stars from his view. The same is true for Martha. Here's Bob's line of sight. He can't see below this line because the horizon is blocking his view. And here's Martha's line of sight. She can't see below this line. Both of them can see these stars over here. This model more accurately predicts what we really see standing on the Earth. The flat Earth model does not. A second critical observation a sailor would have made is that the sky above actually resembles a sphere spinning around. Now what I'm holding right now is a 3D model of what the sky looks like above a spherical Earth. We call this a celestial sphere. From the northern hemisphere, I can see in the northern sky the northern celestial pole right up here with the stars spinning around it throughout the night. As the Earth spins on its axis, the north pole of the Earth, if you could draw sort of a straight line out from the north pole into space, it points at this part of the sky. So as the Earth is spinning, this part right here doesn't turn. It's kind of like the kid who's sitting in the center of the merry-go-round, which is spinning around in a tight circle while all the other kids are spinning around him. From the southern hemisphere, I can see the southern sky, the southern celestial pole right here. The south pole is pointing straight out at it in space. This 3D model here explains why an ancient sailor saw what he saw in the sky as he sailed north and south. But the flat earth model doesn't really explain it. Here's a popular model often used by flat earth proponents. You have what we typically think of as the North Pole here. You have what we typically think of as Antarctica here, but not as its own continent, but as a massive wall of ice around the disk of the Earth, keeping all the water of the oceans in. Where do you place these two poles of stars above the Earth? Okay, well, we could put the North Celestial Pole up here over the Earth, but what about the South Celestial Pole? There's no South Pole of the Earth pointing to the South Celestial Pole in the sky in this flat model. So where does the South Celestial Pole go in the sky? Here? 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 No matter where you place it, you don't create a celestial sphere around the Earth. You create a confusing impossibility. This is why the Greek view of a spherical Earth started gaining traction a couple hundred years before Christ, and why the spherical model eventually spread and became the dominant model throughout much of the ancient world and into the Middle Ages. Add to this another observation that ancient people made. Aristotle noticed that lunar eclipses have a curved shadow. The curved shadow of the Earth is falling on the moon, evidence that the Earth has a curved surface. A spherical Earth model is not some sort of modern NASA conspiracy being promoted by the powers that be to trick and control the public. It is a very ancient idea that was born because of very simple observations made about the sky above.